Okay, I'm back. I'm going to get back to explaining what happened yesterday. So, uh, after trying different things that I thought would work in, um, you know, it could be the cause. I mean, my whole sound system disappeared. I thought, well, maybe if I rebuilt the sound system, you know, during that automated process, my audio driver got blacklisted um, in the etc. mod probe D folder. And so I, d I just wholesale deleted the Alza, uh, <laughs> Alza uh, f a file that was in there, it listed a bunch of drivers that were blacklisted, and I uncommented every audio uh, driver file I could find in there, and then I rebooted and still no sound. So I'm really confused as to why I lost sound there. I really don't know why. <clears throat> okay. So then I uh, took the, uh, the old sound card that I brought from work, from one of the old computers we're going to get rid of, and it's at least five years old, stuck it in there, rebooted, started the computer, and, and the sound started right away. So definitely the driver's ability to interact with the rest of the software or the driver's ability to load is the reason why I wasn't getting any sound, but beyond that, who knows? Um, I wasn't getting any useful log files in, in the Linux log directory. I wasn't getting any useful uh, feedback from Java. <laughs> and so it was just a real confusing thing. I, you know, to me, it's still, I, all I know is my sound works. I, I, I treated my sound card. And the kind of sound card I had was an analog device, is AC97. And a lot of the time, for years, I've, in one form or the other, I found out that I was using that driver, and it's always seemed to work. So I, I'm really confused. I've never had audio not work completely and not, have it not be recoverable ever in Linux before that time. One time I had to go to the Alza site and download some script, but it did a bunch of stuff in the background and figured it out. Figured it out for me. It was great, and I loved it. And otherwise, I was ready to give up SUSE at one point. And then I posted about it at Linux SA. This was like five years ago, but now. You know, so this is the first time I've ever had that problem with sound being gone completely. And the logic behind the whole thing is, is that, you know, it's not just, <clears throat> you know, here, here are the parameters. Well, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so I put the sound card in and I had sound. Then I went to check uh, Pogo and see how it responded. And I started it up with Firefox and went to the same, I deleted the .java folder, and I went to the same balloon bounce game, and guess what? No sound at all. And so I did have some of those symptoms here with, with, with my computer, but I never had it <coughs> completely locked out. I would get some sound once in a while, but I wouldn't get it consistently here, but over there I would get no, I was getting no sound in, in in Firefox with Java at pogo.com playing balloon bounce and so logically I'm thinking well you know so I'm using the same Java I'm using the same version of Ubuntu it was same upgrades same patches installed um, so as far as I know so you know, what could it be the only difference is it's Pentium 4 versus Pentium 7 and there's a different sound card in there than in than here and Obviously, Pulse Audio was properly interacting with the sound system because the new sound card worked right. It was more or less the audio driver in, and it interacting in some manner or fashion with all the software in combination to get where it was. Okay, so next thing I did is I went in, you know, Firefox no sound. And I thought, well, you know what? This is just odd. This doesn't make any sense because I'm getting sound under with the same parameters albeit the only thing that's different is the hardware and the driver could that be it <clears throat> well uh, the next thing I did is I said well this is just, let me just try another parameter here let's just see if Firefox might be part of the cause and so I installed SeaMonkey let me explain what SeaMonkey is SeaMonkey is the latest version of what was Netscape but it is a fork of the development branch. Firefox went in one direction, SeaMonkey went in the other. SeaMonkey still has the, um, the email client in there and all the other programs that were available to run underneath the Mozilla 
engine that exists within it. I mean, we're not talking about a Java thing. This is like Mozilla's own kind of Java thing that's able to um, run its own programs using the Mozilla engine rather than the Java engine. It can still you can still utilize Java both in Firefox and SeaMonkey, but and, and and Mozilla that's still out there. I don't even know if Mozilla's still out there, but um, <coughs> nonetheless, that's the situation as it is. So. Basically, I you know, it started out, Netscape was out there, then they opened their source, and they decided they were going to call it, uh, they're going to have the open source version that the community worked on that was going to be called Mozilla, and then they, they polished it up and they packaged it in such a way to be a commercial application called that Netscape. Then they discontinued making Netscape, and Mozilla kept going on. Meanwhile, Firefox forked from that, and... Uh, People started using that, and they were, I don't see any difference between it besides a, a little bit of a look. <laughs> but in one, you know, it looks better than SeaMonkey, I'll admit. And then um, <clears throat> when Mozilla was closed down in favor of Firefox, there, some people decided to pick up where Mozilla left off, and they decided they were going to call that SeaMonkey. So as confusing as it is, that's a, <laughs> that's a situation. Okay, so now the deal is, is to go over what I just did before my janitor walked in and decided to rumble the trash right in the middle of my talk was that um, what I had done is I actually went to pogo.com just now, went to Balloon Balance, and I had absolutely no sound. Whereas at home, where Firefox had no sound, Sea Monkey had the introductory song every time, and the game, the sounds that the game produces every time, but not not the song that plays while the game is running every time, like 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 it was in Windows. So now I've decided that okay, well I'm gonna delete the .java folder and see if that makes a difference. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a quick and easy solution for everybody to be able to use and say okay, if you want to use Pogo, this is what you do. Nothing complicated. Nothing. Uh, tedious every time you have to delete the .java folder or, or every you have to rename this every single time, etc., etc., etc. You know nothing like that. Um, so without further ado, I guess now that with the .java folder deleted, I am going to go back here to Pogo and I signed in. Also, when you when you install SeaMonkey, even though it uses some the same plugins as Firefox, it does not save your it does not read your cookies or passwords or bookmarks from Firefox. So you have to sign in or somehow get your cookies and passwords over to SeaMonkey. I would think you can probably just copy it from one directory to the other, but I'm not positive. Okay, so let's go over here, try balloon bounce one more time. And this is with the .java folder deleted. So, but this isn't really a, you know, a if it ends up being the, the .java folder is the difference in both SeaMonkey for C I'm expecting SeaMonkey to have a like like at home to do a little better with this um, it's going to play the song more often you know it'd be, it'd be a little more sound features in there. okay so there's the song So this is exactly the way it responded at home, actually. And yeah, so the so the song isn't playing during the game, but I'm getting the sound effects of the game while I play. Sometimes, every time uh, one of those guys hits one of those things, it's supposed to make a ouch sound or something like that. So um, that's the situation. Now I'm wondering if Pulse has something to do with it, and okay, okay. So let's just go to, let, okay, let's let's see if there's any difference at least here if I delete my .java folder. That seemed to be an answer. I also tried at home to rename the uh, live JLza sound or jsoundalza.so file like I did here with that one solution for ten, when I was in 10.4 and that didn't that just made it silent <laughs> it had to remain silent um, 
Okay, so where is my Dutch Java folder? I'm a little tired, so I'm a little slow right now. I am going to move that to the trash. Okay, so I'm going to restart Firefox. I actually had Firefox and CMonkey running at the same time there. And I'll see. If I don't get any sound, if I delete the .java folder and I don't get any sound in CMonkey, I'll try having Firefox on while I go in there. Okay, so go back to Pogo. Now, uh, give you a little bit of information here. Um, I've happened to have compiled or attempted to compile Firefox at one point, and during that process, uh, after an error came up, I just looked at some of the source code, and I noticed there were different options for different operating systems at certain points where it says if it's Linux, do this. If it's Windows do that, you know, there's a lot of that in Firefox. And so this thing's going to get ready to start. Okay, now there's Firefox. And let's see how it behaves. I mean, so I'm not really getting any consistent behavior at all. I see now I'm getting the song. Where's the Sea Monkey I'm not? Which is actually that it absolutely that absolutely contradicts my prediction. My prediction was because it worked better in CMonkey at home, at least I got the impression it did. It it, it would work better in some fashion here, but um, that's not that's not what's what's happening. Okay, so now I have a, G, a .java folder. I also try at home tried to install uh, Internet both Internet Explorer six and seven with uh, crossover Office. <clears throat> when I went to Pogo, I was told that um, that uh, for Internet Explorer 6, uh, they were starting to phase that out. And I was also told I didn't have any Java, so I tried to install uh, Java using Crossover Office, and it wouldn't install at all. Um, and so... Flash would automatically install when Internet Explorer installed in both cases, in the, in the latest version, by the way. But um, and that's in, that's using Wine, that's uh, you know, Linux emulation layer. Um, and so the end result was, I, oh yeah, I couldn't even get Internet Explorer seven to install using Crossover at home. So between those two things, that to seeing if Internet Explorer in Linux, you know, it's another way you can isolate it, right? You can see well. Since Internet Explorer is working fine in Windows, doing it, and you know, it could be Wine or it could be Linux. You can kind of narrow it down by that. If it if it if it if it doesn't work, if it does work, you think well, there's something about the code base of Internet Explorer, but nothing else that's making the difference. It's working right. You know, that's why it's working right. So those kind of things are are, are useful to find out. Now I do have Internet Explorer. <clears throat> installed here. I don't know what version it is. Again, I installed this from Crossover Office, and this is probably <laughs> Internet Explorer 6. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm going to stop. <clears throat>